I don't know how good that really sounded, but that is the actual beginning sounds of if you play the Miss Pac-Man game, uh, that is what the game sounds like. And those are, you know, my old school jams in terms of video games. And the fact that I grew up on arcade games and very early gaming systems like the Atari 2600, uh, Coleco type of uh, game systems. Uh, and yeah, before, you know, basically uh, Nintendo, uh, you know, was the state of the art game uh, when we, we updated to from our Atari to Nintendo. And that was probably around the time that I stopped my game playing. But uh, in terms of actual home games, Though occasionally I would pick up a joystick or a paddle and then eventually a game controller. Yes, they were much simpler back in the day. And I was still known to play various shoot 'em up games at the arcade. Yeah, I did say arcade. So, uh, so it's one of those things where, yes, I've grown up in the age of video games where while we did not have Pong, uh, I, I was known to play Pac-Man, though Miss Pac-Man is way more fun than, than regular Pac-Man. Space Invaders was so exciting when, uh, when you could play them in the arcade games. And then eventually once we got to, uh, more advanced games where you actually went from a controller that was more of like a stick with, uh, a way to shoot, uh, that you actually started to have, uh, um, uh, uh, steering wheels and accelerators for racing games and you started to have guns for uh, for shooting games but uh, but not so much we're not so much talking about uh, the games themselves but we're talking about the sounds of games and their sound design and a little bit of the history plus a couple um, uh, great chapters that are, na um, that are analyzing not only a very early use of sound uh, in, in some more of the early 8-bit type of video games, but also uh, some more advanced sound design when we get into uh, uh, the discussion on Silent Hill. So for this week's discussion, it's video games, video games, video games, video games, and the sounds of video games. So we've got two chapters in Palm Grave. We have Kevin, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is first name is Kevin, but uh, KJ Donnelly's emotional sound effects and metal machine music. Uh, the, what is it? The sound worlds in Silent Hill games and films. And then we have, so that's chapter six, and then chapter uh, 24, the sound in the machine. Um, what is it? Well, he, he, in the game he's known as Hip Tanaka's uh, cybernetic soundscape for Meteoroid, or Metroid, Met, Metroid, Metroid, sure. And this one's more of a early, more like 8-bit type of sound escape uh, that we have. So, so we've got those two readings in here. And then uh, in your content, you have a, uh, a link to a page, uh, which is a quick guide on video game sound effects. And then you also have an article. Uh, well, I actually took it from, it, uh, from Michael Cullen. Um, no, I made a typo there, but Michael Collins uh, did a presentation on basics on video game sound design. And so I took some elements of that and uh, gave you uh, a, a handout. And then there are two examples in there. But um, some of the things uh, that you should know about video game sound Though a lot of it works the same way as the soundtrack for television and film, there are a few unique things about the video game that is different from these other types of media. 
For the one thing, video games are interactive. You play with them. So, uh, so basically, the sounds are important for your gameplay, and the sounds are important to tell you a lot of a variety of different things. Are you getting close to dying? Have you successfully hit your target? Um, you know, have you gotten a power up? Uh, you know, there are all of these various sounds that are linked to achievements, how close to losing a life you have when you gain a new life. And, uh, and also, uh, if you're going to be going maybe the wrong direction, um, if time is coming up, or if you've got plenty of time to get to the next level, there's a lot of different clues into uh, the way the sound is. And as sounds become more and more complex in video games, uh, the need for a more complex sound design. In addition, a person that composes music for a video game uh, has the curious uh, um, um, uh, um, task at hand in the fact that uh, unless it's a transition from one level to the next, an explanation, say, cinematic, you know, video that is explaining, you know, what you need to do for the next level or a little bit background on the character that you're playing, uh, the composer of video game music has to create something that has almost an indefinite length uh, of time depending on how long it takes for the player to finish that level. So it's one of those things where, yes, you've got some looping going on. And yes, um, you still want it to go along with the tone and feel of the game and the type of game that you're playing. Um, also, uh, if you stop in the middle of, say, uh, you know, a certain note, you don't want it to end on a sour note um, that has a good transition from, from one level to the next or when you finish uh, one level to the next. Um, also, there's the sounds that become repetitive. So these are repetitive sounds. You're going to be playing this game over and over and over to try to hopefully finish it. And some levels are going to be harder than others. And, and so these sounds uh, have to also be, depending on the type of game, pleasing, uh, sounds good on repetition, isn't going to become awful and annoying as you play the game. So these are all things that um, you need to make sure, as, as a composer, some of the challenges that they have. Now, one of the things is, as you will, um, in some of the videos and in some of the readings, there were certain constraints with very early video games. The technology at the time is not the same as the technology we have in current games today. Uh, and the fact that uh, a, a lot of them were uh, what sounds actually came out of the, you know, the circuitry that was already in the game uh, that you can use and manipulate. So, so these are a couple of things that there are certain constraints with how can you create the sound design depending on the technology that you have. So that is why uh, very early games have very simple sounds. Uh, Pong has um, pretty much one sound, but it, it, it has three different types of notes to that sound. So it's when the paddle hits the ball and then, um, you know, whether it successfully hits and then, you know, it goes away and then if it misses and, you know, you lose it. So, you know, there's a little bit variation on, on just one sound that you have in the first video game, Pong. Uh, then we start to expand and, and we start to have more sounds and also the addition of music and the, the amazing uh, use of um, 
of sound and amplified tempo, or at least quickening up the tempo that was used in Space Invaders, uh, really revolutionized uh, the gaming sound because all of a sudden you knew, oh my gosh, if I don't shoot enough Space Invaders right now, uh, they're going to attack and I'm going to lose. And so, so uh, you know, the changing of the sounds, the quicker pace that was going on definitely gave you this sense of tension and, and knowing that unless you change something, uh, you are doomed. And, and some of these basics are still part of video games today. So I do want you to make sure that you uh, read over Video Game Sound Effects, a quick guide. And this goes over a lot of our basic terms that we have in, in film and television uh, when talking about uh, some of the basics of a, of a soundtrack for a video game is going to include sound effects, dialogue, and music. And all of these elements are going to be used as well. But as you start breaking it down, when we start really thinking about uh, a game's audio, is when you really start to break it down into the diegetic and non-diegetic sounds. And so this is when we start to really think of the diegetic sounds are the dialogue that's made through characters and usually the sound effects that are triggered by characters within the, uh, within the game. So, uh, and then also occasional background sounds. So if you're playing a shoot 'em up game and uh, it's, I shouldn't call them shoot up games. I should call them first person shooter games, uh, and say it's, it's a war game and you're at war. If you hear additional sounds of explosions, other gunfire, uh, those background sounds are part of the diegetic world, part of the sound effects. When Mario jumps, the sound effects that go with it is considered a diegetic sound effect. Um, that the sound that of Mario and his jumping, uh, the sound of acceleration in a driving game, diegetic sound effects. And then anytime that you, you know, hear someone coming through, say like the headphones, like if again, a war game, maybe you're playing a war game and your commander is, you know, telling you to watch out, uh, that is, you know, from the actual game. Now, when talking about non-diegetic sounds, uh, sometimes these are sounds that, uh, they can be sound effects that accompany, um, like when you've lost a life. And so like in, <laughs> in Pac-Man, it's like the woo, 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 woo. Grand Theft Auto has, um, if, uh, if, <laughs> You know, if a player's thrown from a car and dies, there's a wasted sound effect. Space Invaders, the mu background music increases in tempo. Um, and a lot of times music in general is considered non-diegetic in most video games. But that's not always the case. There are um, some instances, Grand Theft Auto, uh, a lot of times they're listening to the radio on in their car. Uh, sometimes they're not. Uh, sometimes like, uh, there, there will be, uh, you know, musicians playing in the background, depending on the type of game you're playing. But in general, uh, you're, you've got your sounds that are emanating from the game world. And then there are sounds to help us as the player to either signal us, uh, you know, are we doing good? Should we be scared? Uh, should we take another route? That sort of thing. Uh, the game sounds uh, definitely are important because they're used as cues. So a lot of times both the sound effects and the music can be used as cues for when playing a game. Uh, are you running low on ammo? Um, are you <laughs> almost, you know, out of lives? Uh, it, it, are enemies nearby? Are you going on a pathway towards danger? Um, video games have these certain sound cues that will indicate if you're going in the right direction or not. Uh, also, 
uh, many of these games give you, uh, you know, the proper tone of the game. So if you're playing a more action oriented game, uh, the sounds and the music, you know, are meant to ramp up the action. If you're playing a horror game, uh, the music and sound, uh, you know, might be slower and more eerie. Uh, a driving game, definitely ramped up, loud, uh, fast paced. You want to, uh, you want to win the race. So, um, so as you read the article on quick tips, not only does it tell you what are the generalization of uh, sound effects and sounds in video games, it also gives you some examples of what are some good sounds, what are some, uh, you know, what are some examples of some bad soundtracks. Uh, they even talk about uh, various types of sound effects and how you can get them uh, for games. And this is, and this is just general sound design. So it, it does talk about Foley, like we've talked about. So Foley is also used, uh, in the creation of sounds and sound effects for video games. So it goes into a whole, whole detail. And it also goes into detail on how, if you want to create sounds for video games, um, what you can do. Uh, additionally, I have an article or at least this breakdown on the basics of sound design for video games by Michael Cullen. And he goes into detail on what is sound design, and much of this is what we've already discussed throughout the semester. But, um, but for the most part, when we think about sound design, uh, we think of that sound design is, is able to create a mood and a feeling, tell you the location of, of where this world is taking place, it's used to define a character, uh, mirror or exaggerate how things sound in real life, and to clarify the narrative. So all of these things will work with your sound design. And, um, and so these are definitely things also to use and think about in soundtrack sound design. Now, a couple of the shorthand that is used in the various breakdowns of the elements of sound in sound design uh, is a little different than how uh, if you're doing analysis and using shorthand for analyzing film, uh, the shorthand is a little different uh, than, than traditionally used. But this is a good guide in um, Cullen refers to them as families, and so he breaks down the elements uh, in in as families. So we've got DX, which stands for the dialogue, and for Cullen, dialogue is any verbal speech in the game, and this includes also mm, 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 grunts, you know, yeah. So verbal sounds. I wouldn't put it there, but that's okay. Uh, then there's MX, which is music, so that's any diegetic, a uh, non-diegetic music. Uh, SFX, which is sound effects, and he also refers to them as hard effects. These are any sounds from a real-life object, so if a hammer is hitting a nail, um, that's a real-life effect. FOL stands for Foley, so any sound effects uh, that a player makes. And then BG is background or ambient sounds, so noises from the environment. And then Cullen um, has an exercise where there's two videos, and I've included the link to the two videos uh, that you have that uh, we've got the Shadow of a Colossus uh, video. And so you watch that video. And, uh, and for this, imagine what are the various sounds that you think you hear. And yeah, he breaks down which those sounds are. And then there's a second one that is from Badland. And again, it breaks down all the different sounds. So what do you hear and compare it to the list of what Cullen has? Uh, Cullen also talks about, in general, the purposes of sound in a game. Uh, some of the things I already mentioned. So in terms of the action of a player, uh, how many points they're getting uh, when they level up and the health of the character. 
It also gives you uh, the environment, so you might hear things like rain, snow, sleet, that sort of thing. And then also give you a sense of the mood of the game. So basically, these sounds are able to communicate how the player should be reacting emotionally. And then he also goes into uh, where or why would sound effects be needed in a game? And he lists a couple questions like, does it move? Does it draw attention to itself? Does it tell the player something that they can't see visually? And could it create or could it set a mood? These are if you answer yes to all these questions, then that object needs a sound. So basically anytime that there's any sort of movement, anytime that you need to draw attention to an object, anytime that you, that you can't see it, but you need to know what's coming up, uh, you need sounds to that. And then of course, there is the thematic expectation. So whether it is a action adventure game or an 8-bit game, there are various types of uh, sounds that you can or cannot use in this type of gameplay. So, so make sure that you read over that and re review um, the two examples that uh, that we have there. So I'll give you time to do that. All right, now the next part that we have is is fun, especially if you have been playing game if you've been playing games, uh, I, I, I am very much more familiar with the sounds in part one of this video than part two. But, uh, but we've got classic video game sounds explained by the experts, 1972 to 1998. And basically what we have is these, these guys that are actually sound designers for video games uh, talking about uh, the various sounds in video games, why they're iconic, and sometimes a little history about them as well. And then part two talks about more modern games by the same guys, and um, and they explain sounds from games from 98 to 2017. So if you are a gamer, um, you probably are a little bit more familiar with the sounds from, uh, as I said, part two than you are from part one. Uh, again, uh, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not as, as familiar. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, give me a Miss Pac-Man or give me, uh, <laughs> you know, Tetris and, and I, I'm good to go. Uh, even some of the Mario games I'm familiar with, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so that's my thing. So, um, watch those two videos. Uh, it's about, let's see, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes, 24 minutes in length, but I think you will, um, you know, especially enjoy it, especially if you, you are a gamer and you haven't played in a long time. And if you're not a gamer, uh, you might hear sounds that have been used in pop culture and not realize where it came from. So, uh, so yeah, so, uh, check out these two videos, uh, from Wire Magazine, uh, Wired, not Wire. There are two different magazines. Those are two different topics, but Wired Magazine, uh, and the experts explaining the sounds of video games. Doo -doo! Sorry, that's my terrible, uh, sound of Mario jumping. All right. So in continuing on with more classic video games, uh, we have the, our first essay that, well, I know I went backwards, but our first essay that I want to talk about, which is uh, chapter 24 and the sound in the machine and the sound of um, Metroid. And Metroid uh, is a game that uh, is, is a relatively early game. It's from 1986. And the sound design of this game, um, basically there was only so many elements that we had for this gaming system. And this was for, um, the Nintendo, uh, system. So it was an NES, uh, game, 
but um but yes we only had the 8-bit sound and so there were some limitations in the the sound design for this game uh but and and the chapter talks about not only early game sounds like the sounds of pong and uh the exciting sounds of um of of space invaders uh and even uh some other games like you know mario and that and that sort of thing but the sounds of um metroid um, was was one that uh, you know definitely had some interesting ideas in the fact of, and how you can use sound and the soundscape, especially with limitations on what you have in the actual creation of sound. Um, also, the fact that uh, you know, some of its key uses is very reminiscent also of early sci-fi uh, soundtracks like that of Forbidden Planet. So, um, so we do have, and, and it is trying to also replicate this whole concept of, of the cyborg and cybernetics. And oh, this is like, you know, I mean, it's a contemporary of of the Terminator and that sort of thing. But the whole whole concept of the so sound is trying to replicate that. So, um, so then you you also have the changing up on again the sounds of when you are jumping and when you get to certain levels. So, um, so after you read this article, or if you've already read this article. Um, check out the full game. Now you don't have to watch the whole game because it's about 78 minutes of gameplay um, from start to finish. So I want you to at least watch the first few minutes of the game and then fast forward to about the last 10 to 8 minutes of the game. And this is where they talk about how everything kind of changes it, uh, you know, when we get to the mother brain. And then also when we realize that uh, that our hero is is played by a woman, and so uh, so that's when you know also things kind of change a little bit. So definitely check that out uh, so that you have a better understanding, especially on early uh, soundtrack sound, especially of giving you a more full soundtrack design. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm just feeling silly for you, okay? So the last essay that we have is from Kevin Donnelly and or KJ Donnelly on Silent Hill. And this essay goes into great detail about uh, Silent Hill, the video game, and how much of the early games, uh, not only were was the music composed, but also the the sound effects were created by Akira uh, Yamaoka. Yamaoka. So, so he had a uh, you know a great influence over how the game Silent Hill was going to sound like. And this was considered a revolutionary um, soundtrack in the fact that it really changed the dimension on what you would have for a horror game, um, but also how it didn't use what would be considered more traditional classical music, uh, but a mixture of uh, you've got a little indie rock in there, you've got industrial music, you have the use of um, trip hop and, uh, you know, and kind of like dark wave, synth wave. And this music definitely works. Uh, and the use of the sound effects that are used that at times uh, you're almost unsure on how much of the sound effects. I mean, we know that the music is emanating from outside, but some of the sound, you know, the, or the music, but how much of the actual sound effects are actually outside. And so, 
Donnelly talks about um, the acousmatic functions of of the of the sound in in Silent Hill. Also, this complex soundtrack was completely different from Resident Evil, and uh, and so this is one of those things where Resident Evil. Uh, was also traditional in its use of sound design in the fact that uh, it was uh, it it was very functional in its sounds, but it didn't heighten your sense of horror, foreboding, uh, and make you uh, terrified, scared for your life uh, while playing the game. So Silent Hill really does play with. Uh, the character's emotion and investment in the game. Now, uh, Donnelly goes into great detail about the game, but also goes into detail, I mean, the sound of the game, but also goes into great detail about how once adapted for film, that, uh, that some of the elements have stayed the same and some of the, you know, some of the elements have been changed up. So the first two adaptions of Silent Hill from video game to film uh, utilizes all of uh, all of the sounds that um, um, Akira uh, Yamioka has created. So all of the music and all the sound effects and everything are at the disposal in the first two films. And uh, in, and in some instances, it is used at similar points uh, where the stories are very similar from the game to the, um, to the movie, and some are not. Some of the reasons for this is for get the game player's familiarity with, uh, with the game. But the other thing is that, though at times, the music, it, you know, some of it was not used in the same place. Uh, it, in uh, if it was used in similar situations. So my first Silent Hill video that I have for you is an actual comparison of the uh, two similar situations from Silent Hill 1, where our main character, I think it's Harry, I want to get to my cheat sheet. Uh, our main character, Harry, uh, is looking for, uh, I believe it's his lost daughter, Cheryl. And so basically looking for the lost child sequence. And then in the film, it's Rose. And I believe the character that she's looking for, the lost child she's looking for, is Shannon. So, so the character names are different. But you'll see how in style and tone, the translation from video game to film is pretty spot on. Pretty, pretty this, much the same. But I want you to pay attention to the music. And whereas the sounds are pretty similar, uh, we've changed up the music a little bit. So, uh, so check out this sequence uh, comparing the Silent Hill video game to the first Silent Hill film where our protagonist is looking for a lost child. All right, so hopefully that didn't creep you out too much. And this, and again, this is a horror game, and it is meant to be a disturbing. But most of the things that I'm showing you, it isn't too graphic. Uh, I, I try to pick some some good good clips for examples. Uh, so the uh, next two clips that I have for you is from Game Music Minutia. And Game Music Minutia goes into great detail about how Silent Hill 1, uh, the influence of this music, and in particular the influence of Twin Peaks and Suspiria, uh, is uh, the musical influence for the music in the first Silent Hill, and how this also translates uh, later on into the continuation of, of the Silent Hill films. Uh, definitely Silent Hill 2 utilizes the more trip hop uh, type of sounds. And then the second uh, part two is how Silent Hill 
how Silent Hill sound design subtly warns players um, is a continuation of the part one, but talks about both the use of music and sound uh, in the first Silent Hill game. And, you know, how, um, you know, again, how, how you can utilize uh, sound while it's still maintaining this sense of storytelling, uh, also warning the characters, uh, but, uh, but also giving you a sense of tone and, uh, and, and, you know, emotional state and that sort of thing. So I want you to watch uh, these two clips and so you can get a really good idea, especially on how Silent Hill 1 sounds. Now in your essay by Don Lee, uh, he does bring up uh, the influence of David Lynch's Eraserhead and that is brought up as well in these videos, but in particular, the influence of Twin Peaks is brought up uh, as an influence in Silent Hill 1, but there are a lot of industrial sounds as well. And the soundscape for Eraserhead is a very industrial sounding. And when I mean industrial, I don't mean like Nine Inch Nails and Nitzereb and, uh, you know, KMFDM. I don't mean like the musical genre. I mean the sounds of industry. And so, uh, so having this part of uh, influence within the sound design is also um, very important. So the last two clips I have are full gameplay of Silent Hill and Silent Hill 2. And I do want you to just, you know, uh, watch and listen to the beginning on both of them. Uh, and, you know, scroll through and just, you know, give yourself a little bit of sound and you'll notice, you know, a taste of the sound of these games. And you'll notice how the sound design builds from the first to the, to the second game, but still has this, uh, you know, overall serving, servicing the, uh, the narrative of a game, uh, warning characters. And, um, and if you did continue to watch actually the game uh game music militia videos uh there there are more and and the next part talks their their part three starts talking about silent hill 2 uh it starts to talk about how the the music changes and also how the music is also indication of characters and character arcs but silent hill 2 is considered a watershed for the for the um, for the Silent Hill franchise, and the music also very much reflects this, especially with its heavily influence of trip hop. There's lots of uh, commentary on Silent Hill 2 and how it really was a game changer in what you can do with sound and music uh, with video games. And yes, it is very you know trip hop was a type of music at the time that uh, wasn't extremely popular, but matched the, the feeling and tone. So you do definitely have the influence of Portis Head um, on the soundtrack and the opening title music uh, for Silent Hill 2 definitely reflects that. And this might be music that um, you might be familiar with if you've never played the game um, because uh, it, it is, it has been so popular for a game. So, um, so I definitely want you to check those, those things out. And, uh, and I think this should be fun and enlightening to those of you, even if you don't play games, uh, how integral uh, sound and sound design is for video games and how it is uniquely different from uh, movies and television, uh, especially for the fact that it is an interactive type of gameplay, an interactive media, and, uh, and the sound design has to go along with that. So 
So yeah, so make sure that you watch all the videos, that you read all the articles, and uh, and that will get you all ready to go for your weekly, your next weekly discussion journal. Also, hey, it's time to sign up for your uh, final research project topic. I know. Um, so we are going to meet in week nine. Uh, we're going to have one-on-one -on -one, um, me with you know each one of you. And this is where you're going to pitch me your idea of what you want to do for your final research project. This should be something that you are passionate about, something that is sound related that you want to explore in more detail. So the sign up is already ready to go. Uh, so please make sure that you check that out and, uh, and sign up because we will be doing these meetings during week nine. So have a good week. Enjoy watching all these video game related videos. Um, and if you are a gamer, I hope you level up today. Bye.